Now, I don't talk about this much here, but before I had an interest in software development, I was interested in hardware development, eh, such as electrical circuits, computer engineering. And I got a chance to revisit that interest. I was cleaning out a room and I came across a box that was full of integrated circuits. As I was digging through them, some of the ICs that I found were microcontrollers and microprocessors. Well, I decided to take one of the microprocessors and see if I could build a very basic computer with it. And that's what this video was about. This is like the part one uh, of a video. Now, the only thing I'm trying to do here is my hardware equivalent of Hello World. When you write a Hello World program for uh, in software, the basic thing that you're testing is whether or not you have your development environment set up right and whether you're able to produce a program that does something. Oftentimes, you're choosing something that uh, is not complex because there's much more fundamental things that you're just trying to make sure that they work. Well, in the case of this microprocessor, my Hello World program, it's just going to be something that lets me know that the processor is running and that it is actually trying to grab instructions and do something. So to that end, I decided that I was going to hardwire a program for it to run. Now, the program that is actually running is not actually doing much of anything, but it'll give me a chance to see whether or not the processor is trying to read its address lines, whether or not it's getting data from the data bus, make sure that my uh, clock is set up and so on. And so that's what I'm showing here. So really, this is where everything started. I went to bed last night uh, while reading through these papers. And so I think I know what I'm going to be able to do in order to get this uh, running. So based off of my reading, what I want to do is I want to wire a no operation instruction to the data bus. The data sheet is really where all of my efforts started. So I went to bed last night reading through the data sheet and trying to make a decision on how I was going to do this. And so based off of reading the data sheet, the only thing that I'm going to wire up are some of these signals that are necessary. And then I need to wire an instruction to the data bus. Now the instruction I decided to wire, it's uh, a no operation. It's an instruction that does nothing. So for the 6,800 family, uh, the encoding for that instruction is very simple. It is just the binary number one. So I have the least significant digit. It's going to be tied to a high value for that one. And then all of the other bits on the data bus just need to be tied to a zero value. Now for the address bus, um, I'm just gonna have some LEDs attached to a few bits of, on here. Uh, I think I'll primarily be using uh, lines that are over here with these being more significant. They're gonna be changing at a slower frequency and I'll actually be able to make that out blinking. If I try and use the lower ones, then it's going to be blinking on and off so fast that I'll not be able to perceive it. There are some control lines that uh, I would need to take care of. According to this data, sh data sheet, let's see, 36 needs to be tied to ground. So it's gonna be tied to ground. Uh, reset is active low, so I'm tying it high. And then some of these other uh, lines which interrupt the processor or stop the processor, they're active low, so I need to tie those high. Otherwise, I just need to give it power and ground across a few pins that are here, here, and one more here. That should almost be it. Uh, really, the most vital thing that I need to do here is make sure that it gets a good clock signal. Now, in order to get to that conclusion, there were lots of pages that I had to go through. Uh, there's still some things within the data sheet that I have questions on. Um, they give you some timing information for the reset. I will admit, I cut corners here. Uh, that probably won't be acceptable once I start tying more complex circuits on here. They show you the entire system organization. The internals of the processor are pretty dang simple. There's like two 8-bit accumulator registers. Um, of course, we have an index register. About every processor will have a program counter and a stack pointer. And then, of course, there's a set of flags that control other things in the register. Now, since I'm just using a no, no operation, I can ignore most of these for now. Uh, but when I start making programs for it, I just need to be aware of that. Now this flowchart is a diagram that I really appreciate. Uh, if I ever decided that I wanted to emulate one of these, then this actually gives me a pretty darn good starting point. And I think I actually might try making an emulator for uh, this. Yes, there are emulators out there, but I wanna have the joy of making my own. They provide some information on a clock circuit to use, but I'm not going to use this. What I wanna do is I wanna put a clock circuit through a counter now, if I put it through a counter, then I can use that counter to actually slow down the clock. And I'm going to try and run it like outside of the frequency range of what the documents say that you can. 
It's possible when I do that that I'll experience problems. But uh, I've got nothing to, to, to lose and I want to experiment with that just to make sure that I can get the address bus um, as it controls the lights. I want that to be at a low enough frequency that somebody can perceive it. Now here they listed all the instructions that the processor can execute. Uh, you can see I was scribbling below this. I was trying to think of a very simple program that I could run on this. And I scribbled this down before I decided to just execute no operations. I think when I put a ROM on this, that might be the next program that I uh, run. The next program is also just going to blink lights, but instead of just having something to type to the address bus, uh, the processor is going to be responsible for actually writing to a specific address at which the uh, lights will reside. So this is also going to be an important diagram. It shows uh, the encodings for all the machine instructions and tells what flags that it emulates. Uh, it would probably be even more important to me when I try and make an emulator from this. So before I started put, putting things together, I thought that it would make sense to go ahead and sketch out what I was thinking. So I've done a very rough sketch out here using Autodesk Fusion. Uh, so here I'm showing the a hex inverter, and it's called a hex inverter because a single integrated circuit has uh, six inverters within it. Uh, I'm only really using three of those. Of those three, two of them are really being used as my oscillator, and then I take the output of that and just put it through another inverter. And that's what I have um, that's generating my clock signal. Now, I do also optionally put the clock signal through a counter just so that I can start dividing the clock signal up. And one thing to be aware of, uh, whenever you're running a processor at a clock speed that is below the specification, there are some things that might work and there's some things that might not work. So just be aware of that. You might try out a test program and it could run just fine, but whenever it tries to execute certain other instructions, those instructions could then fail because of the clock being below the recommended speed. For the connections on the processor it itself, this is what I had in mind. So you can see that there's a number of uh, lines that are either, either being tied to the voltage source or they're being tied to the ground. Uh, but the important thing is going to be the address bus. Here you can see that I have four LEDs, and I'm sorry that this isn't like clear, but I've got four LEDs tied to the most significant bits of the address bus. For the data bus, since I wanted that to generate the no uh, operation instruction, uh, that's one in hexadecimal. So in order to get that, I just tie the least significant bit to the voltage source. And then all the other ones are tied to ground. So they're tied to being low. And so with that circuit, when I turn everything on, it should just start running. Now, like I said, I did cut some cor corners here. There is a sequence of or there's some information on how the reset line is actually supposed to be tied. I didn't do that. I just went ahead and tied the reset line to a high signal so that it would be in inactive. And then when I powered everything up, just crossed my fingers and hoped it would work. And it did. But as I make something more complex, I'm not going to continue to do that because it might fail. Plus, I will also want to have a functional reset line. So this is the pin. This is the basic pinout of my circuit. Um, there's nothing special in here, but if you want to get a copy of this, I'll make sure that I put it up on GitHub in both PDF and in Autodesk format. I think the Autodesk format will also open in EagleCAD. So here's the oscillator circuit that I put together. Uh, this is going through some hex inverters, but I take the output of it and I put it into this counter circuit. So I can select one of the lines from the counter circuit in order to change the frequency that gets fed into my computer. So I've got it connected to the oscilloscope. And so you can see my square wave here, but you can also make out some of the other frequencies that are being generated by the counter that also show up within there. And now when I connect to my processor, I only have one LED connected here, but here we can see the address line blinking. So I know that it's working. I know that it's doing something. Uh, the blue light is my power light. The yellow light is means that uh, the processor is using the address line. And a green light, as long as that doesn't show up, then things are good. Um, here I added an additional LED and so I can see, okay, it's counting up to three because with one LED, you really can't tell if it's just randomly blinking or if there's something going on. Uh, so then I decided to put some more on here and this is when I got it counting up to seven. So when I saw this, I really knew that it was working. So let's take a closer look at this and I'll slow it down so that if anyone wants to check and see if this is actually counting. Uh, you can examine this and uh, make a judgment for yourself. 
This was a small but significant victory. I was able to just take some parts I found laying around the house and uh, actually start to do something to get them working. Now, I do have a RAM, I do have a ROM that are here, and I'm going to integrate those into this next. I need to do a little bit of thought because I don't have any peripheral, peripherals for it yet, so I need to figure out exactly what my program is going to do so that it can be observable from the outside world. So this won't be the last time that you see this. I'm going to see if I can continue to move forward on this. Um, if you want to read more about uh, what I did or some of the other uh, support accessories that are available for it, you can find those out on my blog. By the time that this video is posted, I should also have some additional information posted there. I tend to post to Mastodon and Instagram much more frequently than I do anywhere else, so be sure to follow me there. Until next time.